In conventional logging operations, the tasks of moving felled trees and buck logs from the cut site to the landing area, as well as building skid trails and dealing with problem trees, are done by that workhorse of harvesting operations, the cable skidder. Skidding is one of the most dangerous jobs in conventional logging. Skidders are powerful machines that skid loads over rough and demanding terrain. And that's where you, the skidder operator, come in. It's your job to know the hazard you will encounter. It's your job to know your machine, its capabilities and handling characteristics. And it's your job to carry out safe work practices every time, all the time. In this video, we'll review the important things you need to do to operate the skidder safely, to make sure the machine is in top running order, and to recognize the hazards that are present, both for you as the operator and others working near you. First, let's look at the things you need to do before you start working with the skidder. All of you know that operating your own car or truck safely means knowing the vehicle, following the rules of the road, and making sure it's in good repair. You also know you have to make sure the tires are good, the brakes are working, and the motor is tuned up. Well, it's the same thing with the skidder you operate throughout the day. Knowing your machine, keeping it in top working order, and following safe operating procedures will eliminate many of the hazards you'll face and help you work safely through a dangerous situation. One of the first things a cable skidder operator must do at the start of every working day is to check the machine out to ensure that critical operating functions and safety measures are in good working order. This is called a circle check, and it involves a thorough systematic inspection of the machine using one of these, an inspection checklist. The inspection checklist, usually one designed by your own company, is specific for the machine you operate. Follow the sequence outlined on the form. It will help to ensure that nothing is overlooked. The term circle check describes exactly what you do. You examine the skidder by following a check of all systems while working progressively in a circle around the entire machine. Let's take a closer look at this particular skidder to learn about the essential parts of any effective circle check inspection. First, let's look at the fuel system. The fuel system, including the tank, hoses, and filters, are checked for leaks, loose attachments, and worn or damaged areas, as well as fuel levels. Examine each wheel and tire as you move around the machine to make sure the lug nuts are tight and the valve stems are intact. Also see that the tires are properly inflated and free from gouges, cuts, nails, stones, or other debris. Remove any buildup of mud, snow, and ice so that any damaged parts can be seen. If using chains, check the condition and tightness. Examine the entire frame, the blade, and the blade arm attachment to the skidder, as well as the rollover protection structure. Watch for structural damage, such as cracks or broken welds. Look for other signs of abnormal wear and tear that could cause equipment failure and result in an accident. The electrical wiring harnesses and drive belts are inspected at least weekly to ensure they are not loose, frayed, and damaged. Fluid levels in the transmission, hydraulic system, and coolant system are checked daily to ensure proper levels. Inspect the winch, cable, and chokers. Look for damaged parts, knots, or frayed and barbed cable. Make sure the choker attachments are in good repair. The complete cable can be inspected when being run out for winching. Always be on the lookout for spills or leaks of oil, hydraulic fluid, grease, or fuel. One of the most important parts of the circle check is what you do after you find something wrong. Depending on your company's policy, some of the items found in need of attention may be your responsibility cleaning the skidder, or adding oil or hydraulic fluid, for example. The other important step in checking out your machine before each shift is a proper start-up and warm-up. 
Each machine should be equipped with an operator's manual or company procedure that sets out the proper starting and warm-up sequence for that machine. You must be familiar with the requirements to ensure that the machine is ready to do the work it's designed for. First, notice how this operator uses three-point contact when climbing into the skitter to avoid slip and fall injuries. The engine is started, and while waiting for temperatures and pressures to reach their operating range, the operator checks the lights, the horns, and makes sure that all loose items are properly stowed. After the gauges indicate that everything is at safe operating levels, raise and lower the blade to check its operation. Then check the danger zone, watch for other traffic, and move the skitter a short distance to test the brakes and steering. Listen for unusual sounds of operation and sniff the air for strange odors that might indicate a problem. And finally, take a walk around the skitter again. Look to see that the lights are operating properly. Watch again for fluid leaks. And remember, don't test for hydraulic fluid leaks with your hand. Fluid escaping under high pressure can cause serious injuries. Starting the skitter in very cold weather can be tricky and dangerous. It may require a battery boost, injecting fuel additives, supplementary heaters, or exchanges with coolant fluids from other vehicles. To be performed safely, these procedures require fully trained personnel. Now that you and your machine are ready to begin work, you need to know a number of common sense rules that govern a safe operation of the skidder and a harvesting operation. Following these rules every time you climb into the cab means that you're being professional and taking responsibility. Let's review some of these rules. All heavy mobile equipment like a skitter has a danger zone. The working area around the skitter where, if someone enters without you knowing it, they could be struck by the skitter or the load. Know the danger zone rules. Watch for other machines and workers on foot. Here are some other important safe operating procedures concerning the danger zone. All workers in the cut and landing areas should be wearing high visibility clothing. Make eye contact with other drivers or workers on foot. Know and use the communication system and properly signal the other person when it's safe to move. Respect the fact that you are at a disadvantage. Visibility may be limited by the load or by piles of logs or slash and brush. Do not proceed through thick brush areas where others may be working unless you know where they are located and it is safe to proceed. Undergrowth, rain, snow, dust, or darkness can also limit visibility, and noise will block out the sound of other machines. Maintain a safe distance from other workers, machines, and the felling areas when cutting is in progress. Where practical, 200 feet is recommended. When approaching workers on the trail who are on foot, stop and wait until a worker is out of the danger zone before proceeding. Before starting any skidding activity, you should walk the skid trail to understand the layout and terrain and to watch for drop-offs, swampy or slippery areas or other hazards you'll need to avoid. Preparing the working area for both cutting and skidding operations is an important part of your responsibility. It's an area that can increase the hazards you and the cutter might face if not done properly. Establishing proper skid trails and removing hazards near the trail and the cut site are important first steps in productive and safe harvesting. The skidder will be used to break trails to and from the landing and cut sites. Brush near the trail and problem trees such as spears, shikos, spring poles, hang-ups and blowdowns need to be dealt with safely. The skitter operator may also be called on by the cutter to deal with similar problems in the cut area. Using the skitter to knock down shikos and safely deal with problem trees usually involves backing the skitter towards the tree and pushing on it with the fair lead in the desired direction of fall. 
If the tree must be winched, make sure the main line is extended to a length that will ensure that the skidder is not in the path of the tree when it falls. Loading the logs to be skidded and traveling to the landing are probably the most time consuming of all cable skidding activities. The pressure will be on you to get the job done quickly. It is very important that you learn safe work practices and apply them so that working efficiently and quickly is also working safely. Let me show you what I mean. Approach the logs or fell trees to be skidded so that you are able to winch in a straight line. Winching from an angle can cause damage to the winch, main line, and chokers, or even cause the skidder to roll over. Before dismounting, the skidder must be safely parked with the blade lowered. Sling the main line and appropriate chokers over your shoulder and walk forward, keeping an eye out for fall and trip hazards. Extend the main line to the point of the farthest log to be winched in the load and begin to attach the chokers. The chokers are attached at the butt end, usually between 18 and 24 inches, by feeding the choker under the log to meet the bell and ferrule on the side away from the skidder. Often the trees are felled across a skid log that elevates the butt end for easier choking. Watch out for logs that might roll or fall. Work your way back to the skidder, attaching chokers as you go. When choking is completed, the load is winched into the butt plate of the skidder. Watch for workers in the danger zone. Make sure you are winching from a straight angle. Slowly winch in the load, keeping an eye out in case parts of the load become hung up in other logs or stumps. Winching too fast can cause damage to the main line and chokers, or could cause a rollover if the load becomes hung up, or cause the main line or chokers to break. The load should be raised to the correct height. However, the height and size of the load will depend on several factors, such as the weight of the wood, the terrain and trail conditions, the capacity of the skidder and cables, the weather, and of course, the distance to be traveled. The landing area can be a busy spot. Other skidders arriving, trucks loading, and other activity means danger. Approach at a reduced speed and stay within the proper routes. Watch out for other machines and vehicles and exercise extreme caution when you prepare to drop your load. When you reach the area where the load is to be dropped, pull the load up just ahead of and parallel to the pile or deck, but a safe distance from it in case a log on the pile shifts and falls towards you while you are releasing the chokers. Briskly drop the load to ease up the tension on the chokers so that they come off more easily. Properly park and secure the skidder. Leave the winch in the release position. Dismount and remove the chokers, being careful that logs do not roll onto your legs, feet, or hands. A front approach at the midpoint of the log with the blade lowered helps ease the log onto the pile. We've had a look at some of the most important aspects of safe operating procedures for cable skidding activity. Before we return to the classroom portion of this training program, Let's review the procedures for proper parking, shutdown, and daily maintenance. Fueling the skidder at the end of the day can be hazardous if some basic safety rules are not followed. Obviously, you must obey the no smoking rules. Always wear the proper personal protective equipment. For fueling, rubber or leather gloves are required. Diesel fuel spilled on your skin can cause serious chemical burns. Carefully insert the fueling nozzle into the fuel intake and continue to monitor the fueling process to prevent spills occurring from overfill. Remove the nozzle, replace the cap, and properly store the fueling hose.
when shutting down the skidder after extended periods of work or at the end of the shift, let the engine idle for a few minutes. This allows the hot engine to cool and return to normal operating temperatures. Always park the machine on level ground away from combustible material and a safe distance from other machines or buildings. If a fire did start, it can't easily spread to these areas. An important part of your responsibility for keeping the skidder you operate in good running order is ensuring that routine maintenance and repairs are completed. Sometimes you'll be called upon to carry out some of these tasks yourself. Or you may be asked to assist the mechanic in a repair garage when things are getting fixed. Here are some important safety pointers for you to follow when maintenance is being carried out. Always work in a well-lit and ventilated area. Make sure the skidder is shut down properly, controls are in neutral, transmission locked and key removed, and hydraulic implements lowered to the ground. If they cannot be lowered to the ground, they must be properly blocked. Beware of fluids under high pressure in coolant and hydraulic hoses. Never check for hydraulic fluid leaks with your bare hand. Use a piece of wood or cardboard. Hydraulic fluid under pressure can cause a thin jet of toxic fluid from a leak to pierce your skin and result in very serious injuries. Always be sure of each other's whereabouts. Never operate the controls or activate any switches from the cab while anyone is in the danger zone. If you are unsure of what is required of you, stop and ask for clearer instructions. Always use proper hoisting and lifting equipment. Make sure it is designed to do the job you want done. Slips and falls are common injuries in maintenance areas. Good housekeeping is the best solution. Clean up any spills of liquid or grease on the machine and on the floor. Remove debris and put away tools and equipment that aren't in use. Carrying out routine maintenance and repairs is important to the efficient and safe operation of the skidder. But remember, you must do it the safe way. There are just too many chances for injury when working on heavy machinery. Operating a cable skidder brings some pretty heavy responsibility to you, the operator. Your safety and that of your fellow workers is at stake. Know your machine. Understand its handling characteristics and capacities. Know the hazards and follow safe practices every time you climb into the cab.